IT Pro TV, an easy, entertaining approach to online IT training. Access over 2,000 hours of up to date, high quality video content live and on demand for a free seven day trial and 30% off the lifetime of your account. Visit itpro.tv forward slash security weekly and use the code SW30. Has your network been breached? Cyber Reason can help you answer this question. Cyber Reason products hunt for threats within your network and eliminate them in real time. To Cyber Reason, real time means within seconds. Founded by former military hackers who don't play by the rules, they've built this experience into their platform. Harness ingenuity and imagination, not just code, to defeat attackers. Cyber Reason, disrupt the adversary and let the hunt begin. Endgame automates the hunt for both known and never-before-seen adversaries in enterprise networks. Built on unique knowledge on the adversary's tools, techniques, and tactics, Endgame's centrally managed agent prevents, detects, and responds to advanced adversaries in the earliest stages of the kill chain without prior knowledge. Endgame. Automate the hunt. Uh, just a quick announcement. Come check out Wild West Hackin' Fest. The fest is put on the fest. The Hackin' Fest is put on by Red Team Specialist from Black Hills Information Security for anybody and everybody interested, <coughs> Excuse me. interested in information security. Wow. Join us on October 27th and 28th for hands-on hardware hacking talks by famous infosecers like Dave Kennedy, Deviant, Egypt, Chris Nickerson, Chris Gates, Mike Poor, Sub-T, and more. Check us out on the web, wildwesthackinfest.com. That's H-A-C-K-I-N fest.com. Wow, I love how I don't even make that list. <sighs> that was the list they sent me. I'm not on the list either. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, clearly, <laughs> clearly, we need to add to the list. Uh, well, I do say and more. We're, we're in. Oh, more. right, right. Yeah, we've been resorted. We've Apparently, if you're in our Slack trailer, you can be whoever you want. <laughs> yeah. we, Paul, just it's amazing that you know we've now been re- reduced to... And more. And more. <laughs> yes, we have. Um, so I'm going to talk about disabling SMB V1 given recent events. I thought it was timely. And I was curious myself, <coughs> like what you do when you have to go disable SMB V1. And it kind of goes along with my research I've been doing about, hey, like how do you secure Active Directory? Like how hard is it? Which stems from all the pen testers I've talked to that I'm like, how do you get into organizations today? And basically your answer is like, we abuse AD, right, Larry? Mm-hmm. That's a basic. Yep. And I'm like, well, that was been like that for a long time. Uh, and I wouldn't necessarily say we abuse it. We just use it as it was intended. Intended. Yeah. A lot of, it's, <laughs> yes. It, the features. It's really features. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> SMBV1 is kind of like a, a feature, sort of. I guess. It's a bad feature, <laughs> really insecure feature. Microsoft themselves in September of 2016 uh, wrote a blog post from the dude who owns uh, SMB at Microsoft. And he was like, please, can you just disable SMB if you want? Like, take it from me. Like, I'm the dude in charge of it. He's like, you really <laughs> need to get rid of it. And I was like, wow. That, I'm like, obviously, then the whole wanna cry thing came out. And I'm like, wow. Like, a lot of people didn't listen. Like, they didn't see the blog. I don't administer Windows Active Directory domains. And I saw the blog post. And I was like, wow, people should, like, do that. Yeah. And no one really does. And so I've delved into it. And like all of the other things that I encounter in Active Directory that I'm like, Yes, people should do that. And then I talk to my friends, and I'm like, why don't people do that? I'm like, they should just do this. And they're like, well, but there's this, like, thing, and it depends if you're on Windows 7 or Windows 8, and then it changes in 10, and then if you have this application or you have this configuration, and then, well, you've got to reboot for this one and not reboot for this one, and that can be changed in the registry, but people can change it back like Mimikatz, and there's just all these like weird things in Active Directory. I'm like, wow, like it really, it's hard. So I decided without help from uh, experts, like real people who spend a lot more time with Windows Active Directory than the rest of us do, unless anyone wants to put themselves in that category as being an Active Directory security expert. Nope. I reached out to ones that I knew. I was like, please help, and they couldn't make it on short notice. So hopefully they correct me <laughs> if I get things wrong. But so from what I've researched uh, with SMB v1, do not disable SMB v2 or v3, right? That's bad. Apparently it breaks a lot of, like reading the Microsoft article, it breaks a lot of stuff. OS 10 and Samba do not require SMB v1. That was one of my concerns. I'm like, if I go turn it off and my computers, either at home or in the studio, I'm like, do I break OS 10 file sharing or Samba? Now, I suppose the well, but there is, 
if it does break, it's likely there are older versions of OS X or Samba that likely at one time used SMBV1, in which case you should probably upgrade those, in which case there's probably a whole list of reasons and continuity on yeah. disabling those. <laughs> if that breaks because problems. you disable that, you've got other problems. Right. And SMB so, ain't one. On Windows 8 and Server 2012, I'm assuming this also is Windows 10. If it's different on Windows 10, please tell me. Uh, you can use PowerShell, set SMB server configuration, <coughs> enable SMB1 protocol, false. Okay, so that's Windows 8, and Server 2012. Windows 7, 2008, R2, Vista, and 2008, it, you can use PowerShell, but you're basically using PowerShell to change a registry key, uh, which I won't read, but there's a registry key for SMB1 that you change the value of to disable it. Okay, we good there. And I have no feedback from the, the listeners because we haven't put the, the... Eventually, there'll be a monitor. We can monitor the chat and people can yell at me. Um, a, anyway, if, if someone wants to check Twitter, I mean, just make sure no one's yelling at me. Do, yell at me on... Do you want us to yell at you now? Well, yeah, you, for, yes, please yell at me now. Paul, so you're, is, you're doing great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, not Kevin. So glad you're here again. <laughs> it's wonderful. Okay. Um, so now on the uh, clients, right? Uh, so that's disabling the SMB server. There's also the SMB client, as I understand. So on the client, you use uh, SC, config, landman workstation, blah, blah, blah. That's for Vista, Windows Server 2008, Windows 7, Windows Server 2008 R2, Windows 8, and Windows Server 2012. There's a set of commands that do that. Um, I'm sorry, that's, that's on the, the client. So then to remove the SMB v1 server, there's another... Uh, what I believe is PowerShell, remove Windows feature name, fs-smb1. So that's the command. These are all in the show notes, by the way. Wakey.securityweekly.com. You should definitely go there. It's like f better than ever before because I spent Yay. some time on it doing like Linux stuff, which I'm way better at than Windows, by the way. Um, so that, that's debatable. <laughs> uh, on the client, <laughs> the client side, there's disable Windows optional feature, dash online, dash feature name, smb1 protocol. Now, for, I believe, all of these. I'm not sure on more recent versions with PowerShell. I believe on all these it requires a reboot across all, all of your systems. No. no. I was going to say, oh, you got to restart that anyway so because it's going to crash. <laughs> it does require uh, a reboot. And so there are other issues on here. Obviously, XP needs SMB v1. To work. Yes. So you, if you're running XP, well, you have other issues. Well, if you're running this XP. This is just one well, of them. Well, there's your problem right there. <laughs> 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 and uh, Microsoft actually issued a patch for XP. They did. They did issue a patch for it. So, and obviously, if you're doing this at scale, these systems are connected to the domain. And that's one, one thing, yep. right? Like, and that's fine. I can push this, all these commands out to all the systems servers and clients, disable the SMB server and client on for version one on all of them. Mm -hmm. And basically that breaks backwards compatibility in XP and earlier. Back to my previous story about Windows 98 and the healthcare organization. <sighs> right. And it will break, I would assume it also breaks OS 10 and Samba that are using SMB1, which are really old versions, so there's another potential to break stuff. Yep. Now, the thing is, if you're doing this in the domain and you're scripting it out so that it turns it off in your domain, that only covers what's connected to the domain. Right. Then you have to go scan on the network for SMB v1. Not a whole lot of great open source tools to do that. I mean, there are, they do exist. I tried them. I didn't really enjoy the experience <laughs> <laughs> of doing that. And, and I did that on like some my really small networks mm -hmm. and thinking like if someone had to extrapolate this out, I'm like, yeah, just use a commercial vulnerability scanning tool and, and tune it basically. Because I tried Nmap, which has, interestingly enough, in Nmap, there is an SMB v2 NSE script mm -hmm. that detects SMB v2. <clears throat> there does not exist one for SMB v1. Now, some people have modified it and suggested how you would modify the existing NSE script to look for SMB v1. I didn't try that personally. Uh, I didn't. I, I do want to go do that because I, I think you do need to search for this on the network. Mm -hmm. It'd be kind of cool to have an open source way to do that. Now, there is a Metasploit module that scans for it as well. 
Um, so, well, problems with the Nmap one. So then, like, if you're like, well, I just want to know about SMB in general on all of my systems, and maybe find systems that aren't connected to the domain. Um, you run into like too many open files <laughs> on both Linux and OS X, oh. which you can tune your environment for. But obviously, I'm like that's kind of problematic. <clears throat> Certainly something that's fixable, but it took a really long time. Now, what took even longer was when I used the Metasploit module to scan for it, and that just takes friggin' forever. I mean, that thing was just churning, and like the fans are kicking on on my you know, like quad core i7 laptop. Oh. I mean, it's running in a VM, but still, I gave the VM two cores and like 16 gigs of RAM, and it's still churning away using uh, Metasploit. So. Yeah. Paul, there, there. I also ran into the same challenge of not finding a script to do SMB1 enumeration via yeah. MNAP, but someone, and uh, I cannot thank them enough, actually wrote a script to detect if MS10, excuse me, MS17010, mm -hmm. the actual mm. exploit against SMB1. Yeah. So that is now been pushed up to NMAP. So you mm. can utilize that. It's not as clean to discover just SMB1 shares being right. open, but it will let you You'll know. You'll just detect the missing patch. Exactly. Theoretically, I mean, before Microsoft released the patch, you would find XP systems that. But didn't have a patch available when we're running SMBV1. Now, my question would be is how does that particular script detect that the patch is missing? So well, the patch isn't specific to V1. The patch, uh, O. But if it's not. O10, O17 is for a vulnerability in the SMB system. SMBV1 right. can be enabled on more than just XP. So yep. yeah. yeah, well, no, what I'm getting at is how does it do the, how does it in fact do the detection, especially oh, where sure. they're non-connected the non domains? It's, yeah. uh, non -connected you can get it. It's a, uh, nmap dash dash script dash yep. update will update your, your uh, nmap yep. NSC script. Yep. And, and my, the reason I'm getting is that is maybe it, because it's going above and beyond to detect the vulnerability, maybe there's something there that could be used to just detect right. SMBV1 mm -hmm. and not necessarily the vulnerability. Yeah, I wish because I don't know what the process. I wish is. Carlos was here. He could probably tell us. Yep. Something he's, about he's, probably. I mean, he's yelling at us from Puerto Rico, right? Probably. Now. But so, uh, in my experience and spending seven years at Tenable, right, was I would look at the open source tools or whatever scripts were available for detecting the vulnerability, and then I would go query our own research team and talk to other people at other vulnerability <laughs> management vendors, and there are like teams of engineers with years of experience of doing. Like, a lot of times there's, like, an SMB person mm -hmm. that does that, and they're the ones that help tune and write the script and test it against a huge lab of, like, every possible thing that can run SMB uh, on, in, on the planet, right? And that's what goes in the commercial products, and that's really what you're paying for, right? Mm -hmm. So my uh, kind of advisory to everyone is if you're using the scripts that Kevin and I uh, were talking about to scan – for vulnerability, that vulnerability, uh, it might crash stuff. And you're probably going to crash less stuff with the commercial tools, probably less over time as they get, once they get released out to the customers, right? Then you've got 100,000 customers that are now running this plugin, and then they give you feedback. If it crashes that weird thing, then the fix goes in for that, and then that plugin is usually really, um, really resilient. It doesn't crash anything. So um, there are... Two blog posts, well, uh, a support article from Microsoft that everyone should read if you're interested in this topic, how to enable and disable SMB v1, v2, v3 in all versions of Windows. It's covered in a great Microsoft article. There's the blog post about stop using SMB v1. There is uh, Will Genovese, um, mm -hmm. Ill, Ill Will, yep. uh, had a great post on the subject and has some other commands in there too uh, and, and talks about this topic as well, which uh, thank you, Will, for that. Uh, it was kind of inspiring me to cover it on the show and make sure people had at least the basic information. Unfortunately, we don't have Carlos's insights and to both the Active Directory environment and how to you know scan for it and some of the nuances. He could probably tell you the weird things that that would crash and stuff like that. So uh, hopefully, we'll get an update from Carlos on the next show. He uh, his wife just had a baby, so excuses. This is important, <laughs> Carlos. <laughs> Uh, and so we'll be running more segments like this based on my, my research. So that's the skinny. That's what I gleaned from disabling SMBV1 in your environment. If you do have things about this segment <coughs> and you're like, well, there's this weird scenario here or there, please uh, send them to me you know, on Twitter and stuff, and I will uh, update the show notes. With that, we're going to take a short break. Come back. Talk about our stories for this week. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Woo. 